Hello and welcome to Baichu's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we start with the practice questions for the day, we have an announcement. Baichu's Exam Prep IAS has already launched its prelims test series. For those students who have already registered for the prelims test series, please do note this week's PTS would be Indian Economy on 18th of December, Sunday. So, for those students who have already subscribed, registered to our preliminary test series, please do give the test. Let's get started and look into the first question. With respect to Agni 5, which of the following statements is are correct? It is a surface-to-air nuclear-capable ballistic missile. The nuclear-capable missile, which uses a three-stage solid fuel engine, has been developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization. Strategic Forces Command, which is responsible for the management and administration of countries, tactical and strategic nuclear weapons stockpile operates the Agnify. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is 2 and 3 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to Agnify. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, the first statement is wrong. Why? That is because Agni 5 happens to be India's long range surface to surface. It is not surface to air, but instead it is surface to surface nuclear capable ballistic missile and it can hit the target with a precision of up to 5000 km. That is an advantage of Agni 5. So remember, Agni 5 is a long range surface to surface ballistic missile. As part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section which are the surface to air missiles that we have in India. Please put it on the comment section. The second statement reads the nuclear capable missile uses a three stage solid fuel engine. This statement is right. So it uses three stage solid fuel engine and this is developed by DRDO. The third happens to be strategic forces command. So the strategic forces command manages and administers all the strategic assets and falls under the purview of the nuclear command authority of India. So the third statement is also right as well. Let's look at some of the key facts with respect to the surface to surface missile. A surface to surface missile is a missile that is launched from the ground to strike land or sea targets. They may be fired from handheld or vehicles, from a ship or ground installations. They are often powered by a rocket engine or sometimes fired by an explosive charge since the launching platform is typically stationary or moving slowly. There are different surface to surface missiles developed by India. We have the Prithvi series of missiles, Agni series of missile, Nirbhai, Brahmos, Prahar. These are some of the surface to surface air missiles. So when we speak about Agni 5, it happens to be a surface to surface nuclear capable ballistic missile developed by DRDO and this can carry a warhead that is about 1500 kg and also launch weight of 50,000 kg making it one of the potent missiles in the country. It is the strategic force command which operates the Agni 5. These are some of the important factual data that you have to remember with respect to Agni 5. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following pairs. We have the nuclear power plant on one side, location on the other side. Kakrapar Atomic Power Station, Maharashtra. Kalpakam Atomic Power Station, Tamil Nadu. Narora Atomic Power Station, Uttar Pradesh. Tarapur Atomic Power Station, Gujarat. How many pairs given above are correctly matched? The answer to this is only two pairs. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to Kalpakam nuclear power plant. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into Kakrapar atomic power station, it is not in the state of Maharashtra, but instead it is in the state of Gujarat. When you look at Tarapur atomic power station, it is not in the state of Gujarat, but instead it is in Maharashtra. So the first and the fourth are not correctly matched. So there are two options which are incorrect 
and as a result only two pairs are correctly matched kalpakam atomic power station yes it is in tamil nadu and narora atomic power station yes it is in uttar pradesh when we look into the other power stations what we have is kaiga nuclear power plant which is in karnataka rajasthan atomic power station in rajasthan kundankulam nuclear power plant in tamil nadu so this article currently makes a mention of what is called as the fast breeder reactor what is this fast breeder reactor these are the special kinds of nuclear reactors that generate more atomic fuel than they consume as they work so this happens to be a nuclear reactor basically it uses fast neutrons to generate more nuclear fuels than they consume while generating the power basically this will enhance the efficiency of use of all the resources that is the advantage of the fast breeder reactor now let's look into the next practice question which of the following statements with respect to zero r is r correct the zero r is not mentioned in the rules of procedure the zero r starts immediately after the question r and lasts until the agenda for the day it is an indian innovation in the field of parliamentary procedures and has been in existence since 1950 which of the statements are correct the answer to this is 1 and 2 only why have we taken this practice question because this article on the indian express makes a reference to zero r let us try and understand what are these statements when you look into the first statement the zero r is not mentioned in the rules of the procedure we have the question r which is mentioned but it is the zero r which is not mentioned in the rules of the procedure so the first statement is right the zero r starts immediately after the question r and lasts until the agenda of the day this statement once again is right but the third statement is wrong why that is because yes it happens to be the indian innovation in the field of parliamentary procedure but has been in existence since the year 1962 so it is not 1950 but instead it is 1962 so what is the zero r this is the time when members of the parliament can raise issues of urgent public importance for raising matters during the zero hour mp must give notice before 10 am to the speaker or the chairman on the day of the sitting the notice must state the subject they wish to raise in the house however speaker lok sabha or chairman rajya sabha may allow or decline a member to raise a matter of importance why is it called as zero hour that is because it is the critical moment or the moment of decision in the parliamentary parlance and the emergence of zero hour can be traced to the early 60s when many issues of great importance and urgency began to be raised by members immediately after the question hour sometimes with prior permission of the chairman or some other times without such permission so the zero hour proceedings start stealing the limelight in the media thereby encouraging more and more members to resort to the quick and handy device and this was introduced back in the year 1962 during the 60s members of the parliament used to raise many pressing issues of national and global import after question r on one such occasion a member raised an issue about announcement of policy made by the ministers outside the parliament when the parliament was in session this act caused an idea among other members who called for another provision for discussing important matters in the house now let's look into the next practice question consider the following statement an aneurysm is an abnormal bulge or ballooning in the wall of a blood vessel aneurysms are more commonly seen in arteries than in veins which of the statements given above is are incorrect since it is asking for the incorrect statement the answer to this is none why because both the statements are right why have we taken this practice question because this article on the hindu makes a reference to thoracic aortic aneurysm why is it called so when we speak about aneurysm it is a localized weakening of the wall of a blood vessel causing the vessel to bulge in that area it increases in size over time and the wall of the blood vessel affects gets weaker progressively as well then what we have is aortic and aortic aneurysm is a weakening and bulging in a portion of the aorta and since it refers to the chest region it is called as thoracic so thoracic aortic aneurysm basically means that there is bulging of the blood vessel where on the aorta and at the same time 
thoracic basically refers to the chest region. What are the possible causes of thoracic aortic aneurysm? Degenerative disease, breaking down the aortic wall tissue, genetic disorders, family history, inflammation of the arteries, plague buildup on the artery wall. What are the symptoms? Symptoms of thoracic aortic aneurysm may depend on the location, size and speed of the growth of the bulging. Often, there are no symptoms at all. Symptoms if they appear may include pain in the jaw, neck, chest or upper back, wheezing, coughing and shortness of breath. Then what we have is trouble swallowing due to pressure on the esophagus. What is the treatment? Treatment includes monitoring the size and rate of the growth of the bulge, managing risk factors such as quitting smoking, controlling blood sugar, losing weight, eating healthy. Medicines may be prescribed for high cholesterol or high blood pressure as well. So remember, when we speak about aneurysm, it is nothing but localized weakening of the wall of a blood vessel. Since the statement given here, both are right statements. Question is asking for the incorrect statement. The answer to this would be none. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statement. Gujarat has the largest solar park in India. Kerala has a fully solar powered international airport. Goa has the largest floating solar photovoltaic project in India. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is B, which is 2 only. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2022. So when you look into the first statement, the first statement is not right. Why? That is because it is not Gujarat, but instead it is Rajasthan, where the Badla Solar Park in Rajasthan with a capacity of 2245 megawatts is the largest solar park. So the first statement is wrong. When you look into the second statement, yes, Kerala has a fully solar powered international airport and this happens to be Cochin International Airport and the third statement once again is wrong. Goa has the largest floating solar photovoltaic project in India. This statement is wrong. It is not Goa but instead it is Andhra Pradesh. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is Bangladesh economic crisis. What is the context? We have Bangladesh which has now reached out to International Monetary Fund seeking for their help. So according to IMF press release, Bangladesh will receive an economic assistance of about $4.5 billion. Now the question is, why is Bangladesh going through this grave economic crisis? There are multiple reasons for it. If you look into the data, Bangladesh continues to post impressive numbers. For one, unlike many countries including India, they saw their GDP contract in 2020. Following the COVID-19 pandemic, the economy of Bangladesh grew during this period as well. Its GDP grew by 3.4% in 2020, by 6.9% in 2021 and is expected to grow by 7.2% in 2022. Despite good GDP numbers, why is its economy not doing good? That is because of multiple reasons and for reasons not associated directly to its economy, but somewhere else, something else is happening which is directly reflecting on Bangladesh. For example, we have the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Since Russia has invaded Ukraine, one of the major problems for Bangladesh happens to be import of oil. Now, Bangladesh Bangladesh is spending a lot of money for the import of oil. This has raised to spike in the prices and this is one of the major causes. The second reason being Bangladesh is also one of the export developed countries which means to say it makes a lot of export to multiple countries like United States of America so on and so forth. In United States of America and in multiple other developed countries, what they are currently seeing is a high rate of inflation. So people are not buying enough of products as well. So Bangladesh, which happens to be an export oriented company, which also makes a lot of exports. People are not getting these exports. People do not want these exports in USA and so on and so forth. This happens to be the second reason. Third, there is skyrocketing inflation in Bangladesh as well. When you look at the inflation rate in November, it was 8.85 as against 5.98% in November 2021. For the 12 months ending November, inflation grew at 7.48%. 
much higher than 5.48% in the 12 months ending November 2021. These are some of the issues as to why Bangladesh is going through some economic crisis, which is why they had to ask the International Monetary Fund for some help. And International Monetary Fund has also said that it is ready to provide some amount as well. So how will IMF's monetary assistance help? Basically, it will help in creating additional fiscal space through higher revenue mobilization and rationalization of expenditures. It will help in containing inflation with increased change rate flexibility so the countries can buffer external shocks better. It will help in strengthening financial sector by enhancing governance governance and regulatory aspects it will help in boosting growth potential by creating conducive environment to expand trade and foreign direct investments among other things and strengthening institutions to create an enabling environment which will meet climate change objectives so with this whatever short-term issues that bangladesh is facing right now they would be able to meet up to it and in the near future they may also have to bring more structural reforms as well added to it because of this economic crisis there is political crisis unfolding in bangladesh and people are protesting against the government as well it is this that we have to understand with respect to this topic so that's it for today thank you for watching all the best